Hello everyone and welcome to another video on VEX. Um, this one is on the unlikely topic of seashells. As you can see the one I have here spinning on the screen. Um, a few weeks ago one of our users sent me a math paper he thought I might be interested in it and it was on how a conical helix looks like a seashell. I found the paper pretty interesting so I decided to implement a module for it for my own use and uh, it turned out well enough I thought I'd put it into the program in case anybody else out there wishes to build some shells. Um, so let's take a look at how to use it. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to point out that I have unchecked lock circles here under scaling. And uh, I tend to use my screen with origin in the center. That's a personal preference. Uh, yours may be down here in the corner. The program for shells is reliant on the origin. It, it can be wherever you wish, but it's a little bit more uh, intuitive to use if origin is in the center. Now, to use the shell wizard is pretty easy. I'm going to uh, just pick my circle tool here and draw a circle. Uh, hit OK so that I'm out of a tool. And now if I select that circle and then select the shell wizard, which is a small icon over here under the editing tools, you'll see we have a uh, few selections like the turn ratio, which is defaulted at 10. A, uh, a selection which goes between horn and shell as a percentage, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, if you leave things at their default as it starts up and hit preview, you'll see that on the screen a representation of a conical helix in which the scaling of the original drawing is kept in proportion to its reduction in arc. Uh, this creates what looks like a, a shell. Now this is a pretty simple one. We've simply put our starting contour uh, away from zero in a straight line on the x-axis. So we created a shell which is a straight spiral on the x-axis. That is a cone of zero degrees. Uh, I'm rotating the screen here by the way by pushing my middle mouse button in case anyone's not familiar with that. You'll see an icon appears in the center and you can then rotate. Now if you take that contour and move it to a 45 degree angle you'll create a new cone which would result in something that looks more snail shaped. Now of course the raw images themselves don't look uh, much like a nautical creature because they're a little bit too mathematically perfect. On the inside of the mouth, which is all that you draw to control these shells, another tube is created which goes back about a turn and a half. This would allow you to hear the ocean in them if you listened, but uh, more importantly it gives us a three millimeter lip so that a 3D printer can print these as STLs. Now, in addition to the shape being important to define the mouth of your shell, its location in space away from zero defines its conical angle. So you'll see if I move it up here in preview, I end up with something that looks a bit more nautical and more like a snail. Now, let's take that down to the next notch. We'll go down across the x-axis. I'm going to stretch this circle, and this is why I unchecked the lock arcs to scale. Normally, if you scale an arc and that is checked, uh, the circle will grow or shrink, but it'll stay a circle. By unchecking the lock circle, I can now stretch my circle and it essentially turns into a BZA patch. So it's now composed of BZA curves. Uh, if we could go in and take a look at it, we can see we now have control handles with which we can change the shape of the entrance to our shell. Now up here in helical turn ratios, uh, I'm gonna turn that down to say four turns and hit preview, and we'll end up something that looks much more uh, like a Nautilus shell. And again, if you move these up to, uh, I'm just going to double select that so I can move it. If you move it up, uh, then you end up with more of a snail shape based on the shape that you're starting with. Now, something I'll point out about these is they can get a little complex for you to figure out exactly what you've drawn and why you've drawn it, uh, or why it's appearing. Uh, the way it is. You'll notice my contour is quite small and yet I'm, I've got a large mouth going into this um, snail. Uh, the reason for that is the rules of the conical scaling. Depending on where you put it, the program knows it has to scale the mouth to a particular size for that number of spirals. So be careful as you're placing these to note that you have to measure your final piece, not 
uh, because where you place your contour may not specifically address the size of the shell you're going to make. Scaling these is fine, but you're only starting with a 3 millimeter mouth, and if you're going to STL print or 3D print them from the STL, you might want to consider building them to the appropriate size so that that 3 millimeter is in proper proportion to your print. Um, as I move this around, the shape drastically changes for the shell depending on this helical turn ratio and the foundation ratio here, which w if I slide horn all the way over, over to the horn side, uh, you'll notice now I get a ram's horn, something which might be interesting as a 3D print as well. But as I slide it towards shell, it means that the shell is overlaying on top of each loop, and this is the way most snails and show on would build themselves, is with more of a shell foundation, where the mouth of the shell is actually intersected by previous uh, loops. So playing with those will give you a, a good fair representation of uh, the shell that you're looking for if you play around with it a bit. Now in addition to that because you don't want them to be too perfect we can throw growth rings onto the shell. The probability of a growth ring appearing uh, is set with the top slider. A 20% probability as it goes around will give you a certain number of them, but they're in irregularly spaced based on that probability. The maximum density will uh, select how thick these growth rings look, and I'll show you an example of growth rings uh, when we're finished. Now, when I push preview for this, you may not see much of a change. Uh, I do have to select the contour. If I hit preview, not much change. You saw a little bit of uh, variation in in the output waves, but if I hit create, you'll get a better example of what growth rings and such look like. It takes a moment to create the STL, and of course, uh, VEX is not much of an STL program. This, this, these things that I throw in sometimes aren't fully supported for tools for you to do things. It's a little inconvenient to have to rotate the screen around in order to look at what shell you've got. Uh, so if you select the shell and then press this STL scale rotate button over here, uh, it will be opened up in a screen where you can just click your mouse and rotate your shell around. So now you see these random growth rings appearing on the shell as it grows. Uh, so that's the use of growth rings. Let's take a look at another possibility. Incidentally, if you're rotating it around and you hit OK, it will actually move the shell on the screen to that orientation so that when you save it as an STL, you're saving it in the orientation that you desire. Also, if you select a contour, the STL associated with it uh, is also selected. Hitting delete will only delete the STL. A second delete would delete the contour. Um, another option that you have when you build a shell and I'll bring up the shell wizard again, is we can roll the shape as it creates the shell. A roll rate of one means to rotate once in a full roll. Uh, and sometimes just subtle rolls will change the shape to be quite interesting in terms of a seashell. Um, one final option that you have from all of this, I'm just going to cancel out of that. I'm going to copy this uh, contour and then do a paste. And once we paste something on the screen, whatever is selected and handles is what you just created. So we can just move that away. The program will morph between two shapes if you select both shapes. And the shape furthest away from the origin is considered the morph to shape. And the shape closest to the origin is considered your shell progenitor. So we can select this one and move it where we will. Uh, to select the shape as long as we don't move it further away from zero than that shape is, in which case they'll swap usage. So let's put this shape here and let's modify this shape uh, in order to give us a difference as we morph. So I'm just going to select a circle here and let's just put a bubble on this shape just for the sake of uh, ease of use. I'll select my scissors and I'm going to uh, ungroup this shape. Uh, when you create shells with shapes, they get grouped, and you can't edit a group. So I'm just going to ungroup this shape, take my scissors, and notch out this circle so this shape now has a bulge. I'll select OK. And now I'm going to select both shapes, go to our shell wizard, and do a preview. 
And at this point, the, morph the morphing operator here will say how often to morph from this sh first shape to the second shape and back uh, during a rotation. Here I've got it set to one, and I end up with a very strange looking shape, but you can see we start with no bulge, but by the time we get over to the left hand side, we have a bulge on our shell. Uh, the speed of how fast that bulge appears and disappears is set by this morphing operator at the bottom. Let's create that shell for the heck of it and see what we've got. It takes a moment to create these shells. It can take even slightly longer to save them. Uh, now you can see that this shell is uh, pretty twisted. It still looks kind of nautical, but uh, let me open it in the STL window. There we go. And this is the type of thing you might want to watch out for. Um, that may 3D print, who knows? Uh, and if you're looking for a shell from an alien world, I guess that one would do you. But uh, in any event, take care that the shape that you generate looks legal to you for a 3D print. Some 3D printers are much more tolerant than others of errors. Uh, but it is possible to get errors here simply due to the interactions of creating the STL from all these uh, varying waveforms. And that's it. That's uh, pretty much how it goes. If you wish to export an STL that you create for 3D printing and stuff, you can with the file export STL as long as it's uh, selected. Um, these are fairly large objects, so be prepared for a bit of time of loading in your 3D printers and stuff. And uh, have fun. Before I go, I thought I'd show you a picture of some of the shells that I've made over the past week or so. Uh, you'll notice some of them are broken up, and this is because I was not yet scaling the inside tunnels uh, to make them thick enough for a printer to print. Ironically, they have looked more real as a result. Uh, one in the foreground has been coated with conductive nickel paint to be prepared for copper plating, and one on the uh, far left has already been copper plated as a test to see what shells would look like if they were copper plated. Well, that's it. Quick video, quick module uh, for all those times that you just can't do without a shell. Have fun.